Hey everyone, this is Jessica Brigden of Jess B Creative Cardiology. Thank you so much for visiting my channel today. I am taking part in a video collaboration with some demonstrator friends to showcase the all dressed up dies. Now these are part of the Dressed to Impress bundle. These are in the Stampin' Up mini catalog. Um, on page 55, you can see them here. And so we have lots of fun ideas for you today. I'll be using the new Stampin' Up! Ornate Garden Specialty Designer Series paper and showing how we can make a couple of cute little fashionista tote bags. Um, yeah, a couple different variations on that. So stay with me here as I show you some fun tips and tricks. You will need some of the Ornate Garden Specialty Designer Series paper and this strip is cut to five and a half inches wide and you need it about 10 or 11 inches long. So we're actually going to use this piece of the die. This is what gives us the bag shape. So we'll be cutting two of these from this piece of paper. Now, if you're using cardstock, you will need two half sheets. You'll need two five and a half by about five and a half pieces here. So if you're using designer series paper, just one long strip that's five and a half inches wide will do. So I have my Big Shot platform here. Uh, because these are thinlets, you do need your um, tab one or your thin die adapter as well as your clear plate. I'll go ahead and put the designer series paper right on top. Now when you're working with a pattern like this, um, keep in mind that the main focus of your bag will be in this open window here. So as you lay this on your designer series paper, you can move it to determine what focal point, what pattern you would like in there. So I think I would like these pretty pink and red and yellow flowers. So I'm going to leave it right like that and then go ahead, put a top plate on to complete my sandwich and then a quick run it through the big shot here. Okay, we'll do a little snap, crackle, pop. So you're gonna run it through once. It is gonna be a little bit tight. So you will feel a little bit of tension. You hear a little snap. Go ahead and crank it back. All right, so that does your first piece. And then you're going to need one more. So your patterns aren't going to be perfectly exact. So for example, on the first piece here, we have the pink and red flowers. You can go ahead and move your paper if you want, and then that way the second piece, the back side of your bag would coordinate again, but that's okay. This pattern is so much fun that if it's not exact, like you could go like that, I think I'll just do this, and we'll have some fun wild patterns on there. This pattern is a bit bohemian, so it doesn't have to be all matchy-matchy. So we're going to cut our second plate. So you just need two pieces, and then you'll need some coordinating ribbon and a couple of punches. So these are actually really quick and easy to make, to make fun gifts for, um, I say party favors or different things. Um, currently we are in social distancing mode here because of the COVID-19, so we aren't getting together, but these would be fun. They're lightweight, great things that you could package up and send to your friends and um, even do a little virtual party. So to hold these all together, you definitely need some of the sticky, this is the tear and tape. And I like this because you can actually see where you're going. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just go ahead and score, fold these on the, on the score lines. The nice thing about this is it's, Stitching is done, score lines, everything is done all at once when you run these through. Okay, so they will fit together like that. So we're going to put our adhesive, hold your bags just like that, line them up the same. And then we're going to put our adhesive on the inside right down to that score line. Okay, so you're gonna do that on both pieces, right along the outside edge right down to that, that fold line, okay? And then we're going to flip these over 
And on each of them, we're going to put a little tear and tape on the little small flap. Okay, it's pretty sticky, sticks to your fingers. And then on just one of the pieces, right along that fold line, we're going to put two pieces of tear and tape. All right, so it's important that you get all of your taping done first. Now what I like to do, because on this bag in particular, I liked my fun ribbon. I'm using the terracotta tile ribbon. It has this really pretty um, scalloped trim on it, which I thought coordinated perfectly with the stitching on, on the bag die. And so I'm going to put my tear and tape on each of these as well. So you can see there's a little bit of a stitch line that goes up the side of each bag. So we're going to put our tape, run it right up along that line, right up to the top of the bag. And you're going to do this on each side here. So that's piece one. And then on the other side, right up to the edge. Okay, so it's important to do all of your taping first and then your assembly will be super quick. All right, so we're good with the tear and tape for now. So next thing to do is measure your ribbon. So with the scalloped trim here, you need uh, two 13 inch pieces. So one for each side of the bag. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure this on my ruler here. We need a 13 inch piece for the front and then a 13 inch piece for the back. So this double says some decoration as well as the handles. So what we'll do is just go ahead and tear that tape right off. I need to burnish it a little bit with your fingernail and make sure it tape stays on your paper. Okay, so we'll take the first piece line it right up on the edge, come up along that stitch. Okay, go ahead and burnish that a little bit to make sure it holds securely. And then come right around and you're gonna do the same thing. Just right here, right up the side. Perfect. Okay, so that's piece number one. Do the same thing here on piece number two. All right, just tear that little wax paper off the sticky tear and tape. Okay, right up along the edge next to the stitch line. Make sure that your ribbon stays going in the same loop here so it doesn't twist on you. Okay, and then right, right there. Perfect. Okay, so now we're gonna start with the bottom. So go ahead and tear your tape off of this bottom flap. This is the front, and we're gonna go ahead and line that right up on there as well. Perfect. Okay, so now the now you can see how your, your um, bag is starting to take shape. So now we've already scored that. We're gonna start with these little inside flaps. Okay, so fold each of those up. You're gonna do one side at a time. And that's gonna come right in there and hold securely. So you might wanna use your bone folder. You've got it handy there, just something to um, go ahead and hold that down. And then you're gonna do the same thing on this one. So go ahead, fold this in, right in place. Okay, so now we'll take that inside tape off Again, one side and then the other. You're gonna line that right up, right along that score line. Perfect. And just go ahead and pinch it. And then again on this one, we'll tear this off. All the way down. Okay, right up along that score line. Perfect. All right, so your box can go either way. You can put it in like this and pinch in the sides or I kind of like the wider style, kind of these um, beach bag-like 
totes. I like big wide totes myself with the nice handles that you can swing over your shoulder. So this is the start. So essentially our little bag here is done, but of course we need some, we need some bling. So to what I've done, I've used the stitched shapes frameless dies. I love these because you get the circles, the ovals, and we even have rectangles, or excuse me, squares on there. So I used the second smallest. This one is about one and three quarter inches. And I cut that just with some whisper white cardstock here. And then I'll take a scrap or some leftover pieces of um, that I used to die cut my bags with our small with a tiny daisy punch. And we're just going to cut out two patterns here. See what, there's so many fun colors in here. All right, then I'm gonna hold those together with a glue dot. So we just need to put one dot, let's do this one on top. So we'll just put one dot on the back center and then we're going to not just stack them straight on, but just rotate the petals so that they fill in the gaps. They just stick right onto each other. I'm going to put one dimensional on the back side. This will hold our daisy to the circle. Okay, and it fits perfectly right in that stitching. You can even curl up the petals a little bit. We'll use the new gilded Gems, these are part of the Stampin' Up! Ornate Garden product suite. And I'm going to use the largest, one of the largest gems here. I'll just pry that off. And that will be our flower center. How cute, adorable, perfect. Okay, now to attach it to our bag, uh, you need a 1 16th. So the teeniest, tiniest little hole punch that you can find. And we're going in just a little bit. We're gonna punch a hole right, right in there. And then I'll take some linen thread. So you can see linen thread kind of wads up on me here. But you need approximately, if you can find the end, right about six, about six, seven inches here. So I like to hold the ends together. I'm just gonna tie a knot. All right, tuck that through. There we go. Okay, so we'll tie a knot in the end. Then we can go ahead and trim that off. Now this is the tricky part. You wanna pull it really straight and tight. Really gather that end right up tight. And we're going to use that. We're gonna poke that right through that tiny little hole. Okay, so if you get it nice and tight, and you can see it starts to poke through the back. If you can grab that with your fingernails, you're gonna pull that right through, all the way through, and then you can just straighten that, straighten that out a little bit. Now you can separate it, the two strands there. Okay, so find your two strands, then we're gonna take this and just loop it, take the knotted end and our loop end and just pull one through the other. Okay, so poke your knotted end through the loop. Go ahead and pull that tight, adjust it here so that it hangs on your bag right where you want it. And then you can even put a little glue dot right on the inside. Let's grab a glue dot here real quick. And we'll just secure that knot right on the inside behind the handle there, okay? So that way it dangles, but it's not gonna fall off and it's gonna stay right where you want it. So how adorable is that? It'd be perfect, perfect spring, summer colors here. And at least this way we can um, showcase our, our fun little bags and things in our home, so though we can't exactly we can dress for spring, but we have nowhere to go at the moment since we're all staying home and staying put. But you can brighten up your brighten up your day or your home with a little home decor or even fill these with candies. Um, 
I was thinking the, the little twin pack of Milano cookies would fit really nice inside there. And that would be a fun package that you could send to a girlfriend or, or your mom or somebody that you're thinking of just to brighten their day. Let me show you one other alternative here very quickly. And that is using a different pattern um, from that same Ornate Garden Designer Series paper. This time I've used the gold foil pattern. The back side is this little, uh, it reminds me of the Mary Englebright posies that, um, that she painted there. But this front side is gold. I thought, oh, that's super fashionable. So I've already die cut these. I've already put on the, um, the tear and tape. This time though, instead of our ribbon going all the way up and around, I've just put a little bit of tear and tape at the top and I've used this little buckle portion from the dies to die cut these fun little clips from some gold foil paper. So what I'm gonna do with these is I've taken, this is the a vanilla ribbon with the gold trim. So it's the metallic edge ribbon, love it, it's gorgeous. And so we're going to slide that through. I've cut this to seven inches. So you need two seven inch pieces. You slide that in the buckle and then it'll curve and poke down in. All right, and then just leave yourself maybe a quarter of an inch hanging at the bottom. So we'll remove that wax paper topping from our tear and tape, and then you're gonna use that. Your little buckle will go right on there, and that way it holds both your buckle and your ribbon perfectly in place. Okay, so I had a second piece of gold foil. Always do that and lose something. So let me real quick die cut another little set of buckles. The cool thing is they give you, you've got two dies and each die does two. So you can cut four buckles at a time if you need to. And I've done that with the gold foil paper. And match that nice gold metallic sparkle that gives, makes this paper so special. So just poke these out of here and then in the center. There goes our die, perfect. All right, so I'm gonna weave this piece through as well. So in from the back, over the top, and then down in again. And then hold yourself about a quarter of an inch. Peel off this wax paper and then set your buckle right down, perfect. Okay, so now we can go ahead and glue our bags together. So we start at the bottom again. Go ahead and line those right up. Nice thing, you've got the perfectly, perfect edges right there. Then we're gonna do the, the little, the small tabs. I need to grow my fingernails a little bit better just so I can grab that. If you don't have fingernails, then Stampin' Up! does have the multi-purpose, your, take your pick tool here with the spatula end. That actually works really well for prying those off. Should be using that just a little bit more. There we go. Peel that right up, perfect. Save your fingernails, save your manicure. Okay, so go ahead and do one side at a time. Fold that up, secure the little, little flap you can fold that up secure the little flap go ahead and just burnish that a little bit with your fingernail then we'll do the side flaps okay peel that right off fold this in all right goes right up along right up along that fold line perfect Okay, and then we'll do the other side here. Okay, just fold that, fold that in real quick. All right, I like to do things from a certain direction, so yes, whichever works 
for you. But take that, go right up along that fold line. Perfect, nice and secure. Adorable little bag there. We've got the gold bling. And then I thought how cute these would be. We're coming upon spring. It's kind of wedding season, bridal shower season, prom season. How fun would it be to make a little tag here with uh, the initial for your bridesmaids or your girlfriends. So what I've done is used a two inch circle punch and I cut out a piece of gold foil. And then I again used the second smallest circle here from the stitched shapes framelits. And I cut my whisper white circle to layer right on top. And then I have used the letter dies. These are Stampin' Up's hand lettered prose dies in this fun scripty font. So of course I made a letter J for Jess B. And so I get you could hang that, but I thought this would be kind of fun. Let's go ahead and we'll just put a couple of dimensionals on the back here. And we could stick that right to the front of our bag. Everybody loves a monogram. There we go, perfect. So I hope you like these two ideas using the all dressed up dies. They're super fun, super easy to work with. You can buy them a la carte, just as the dies. You can get them together with the Dress to Impress stamp set and save 10% on the bundle. So I hope you enjoy these, enjoyed the uh, sneak peek, the new Ornate Garden Designer Series paper. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment and subscribe to my channel. And definitely in the comments, I have listed the other, um, my Stampin' Friends who are taking part also in this um, video hop. So please check out the links to their videos and see what inspiration they have for you using the All Dressed Up dies too. Thank you so, so much. Have a great day.